Hello, my name is Ryan with Buster Beagle 3D. First, I wanted to thank everybody for the nice reception to my injection molding machine video that you can check out here. It took a lot of work to put that together and I appreciate the interest it generated. I did have a bunch of questions that came up, but the one I got the most was how to create the molds for the machine. So let's get started. Like I was saying in the last video, there are many different ways to make the molds, but rather than a tutorial on exactly how to use a specific piece of software, I'll go over some basics and links to other resources that might be helpful with your specific needs. First thing I would recommend is Bill Hammock's video on plastic injection molding for the most basic explanation of the injection molding process. He does an amazing job explaining how a modern injection machine works, but also explains things like what are the different parts of the molder called, such as sprues, runners, and parting lines, as well as an explanation of how draft angles are needed in your design to make sure your part can easily release from the mold. It's a great place to start. For those of you who are planning to use an SLA printer to create molds, please head over to the link below for the white pages from Form Labs on how that process works. There is a lot of information and examples on their site of how to best manage using that method. The method most of you are probably interested in is how to use an aluminum mold for injection molding. I cut my own molds out on my Hobby 3018 Pro CNC machine with an upgraded 500 watt 52 millimeter spindle. First place I start is where to source the material to create the molds in the first place. If you search online, you can find companies that sell blank molds that are ready to be cut. These are great mold blanks and require the least amount of work, but may not be the cheapest option out there. Also, if you happen to make a mistake, you're not going to be very happy as these perfect blanks tend to be quite more expensive. I like to find the cheapest option that still functions properly, so I like to use a company called Speedy Metals to source my aluminum. You go to their site, pick aluminum, choose flat, I then choose 6061 aluminum and choose the size I want. I find that 2 by 3 inch half an inch thick is a great size for a mold half for this machine. As you see, you can get one of these mold halves for around $2, much better than the higher cost of a precision pre-cut aluminum mold. I like to pick up a whole box of these in case I make any mistakes and need to cut a new block. They are cut to size within an eighth of an inch in the length, so they are not perfect, but they are great raw blocks at a cheap price. I'm also not affiliated with them in any way, just for the record. I just like to use them. Next thing I pick up is a bag of these 1 quarter by 3 quarter inch steel dowel pins that I use to register the two mold parts together. When I cut my molds, I make sure I cut one side the same diameter as these pins and use a vise to press them in after I cut my mold. The other side of the mold will have holes slightly larger than the diameter of these pins. That way the two can come together the same and line up how I want them to. Again, since there are so many different CNC machines and different software for CAD and CAM, I won't go into specifics of a piece of software, but I would recommend two videos that help with the process. The first one is Evan and Caitlin's video using Fusion 360 to create toolpaths for a CNC machine to create a 3D cut. They have a great how-to on how to use Fusion from setting up the bit sizes, tool paths, and creating the G-code needed for the cut paths on the CNC. Their video is cutting an object out of wood, but the concepts are the same. Fusion 360 is also free for hobbyists, so it's a great and powerful tool for all makers. Now one thing I would say about Fusion 360 is it's a powerful program that can not only be used for manufacturing, but also modeling and much more, but to some it can be a bit of a learning curve. If you already have a model and just want to cut, I also recommend a program called CamBam. Now CamBam is a paid program, but they do offer 40 free trials of the software to check it out before you buy. Now this isn't even 40 days, but trials. It means it only counts a different use each time you reopen the program, so essentially if you never close it, you're still in the trial, which I find very generous of them. The thing I like about this program is how simple it is to use versus Fusion 360, but it might not have all the bells and whistles. For someone like me that came from using programs like Maya and Blender to model, it was a great way to set up toolpaths for an existing STL model. There is also a video linked below that shows how to set up a mold from an existing object in CamBam, 
which is a great way to get you started. Just a few tips on aluminum molds. First is that you want to design your mold with holes for the registration pins that I mentioned before to keep both sides aligned. Again, you want to make sure that you pick the best spot for the parting line and also make sure that you don't have any undercut areas that wouldn't allow you to release the plastic from the mold after shooting. You will also notice that vents are cut into one side of the mold. These are there to make sure air can escape the mold, but are too small for the plastic to come out. I would also recommend only cutting the part and the main sprue during the CNC process. After everything is cut, I then clamp the two parts of the mold together and use a drill to add a semicircle to create a clean, easy connection point for the nozzle to sit on. I use around a 5 16th drill bit to create a nice, clean connection. The last and final way of creating a mold would be to buy an aluminum frame from a company such as Tech Kits and create an epoxy mold. They created a great write-up on the Instructable site with a video as well showing the process. Links to this and everything I talked about are in the description. So that's it. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for watching and to all of those who are already started putting these machines together, I can't wait to see what you're able to come up with. I'm also already starting to think about ways to improve the machine based on feedback, including a way to extend the shot volume to a larger two cubic inches with extension parts added to the current design. These would all be add-ons to the current parts, so don't worry if you've already gotten started. Also, don't throw away the extra part you cut off the handle if you did the handle extension for the machine. It may come in useful for any upgrades that we're planning later. I also wanted to thank all of the new subscribers, and I hope to be adding all kinds of videos to my channel with everything from 3D modeling to CNC, 3D printing, injection molding, and I even have my eye on a project using a vacuum forming machine that I just picked up. Anyway, thanks again, and we will see you next time.